<laughs> Not this guy again. Hi, my name is Joe, and welcome to the channel rather dubiously called Rufio, where I use this content to trick you into thinking I'm capable of playing the Yu-Gi-Oh card game on any kind of level at all. Part of the burden of being the best yu gi -Tuber in my street. So why don't you go ahead and hit subscribe for me, whether it's just because you like trash tier content or maybe just because you pity me. I don't mind either way, I just need every bit of help I can get. This content is brought to you in association with my Chungai buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. If you want to find excellently priced singles or maybe you just want to shift some of that cardboard crack you have a little bit too much of, they'll be more than happy to give you the hookup. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description. Hi guys, it's Joe here from Rufio. we got Broads here who just absolutely swifted me. What's up? As you'll see in my vlog, uh, much better player than I, and uh, that shows in the results, no comment. Uh, he's going to bring us his deck profile here, so what have you got for us? I got an uh, Inferno Ball. Which is insane at the moment, right? Yeah, I think it's, I think it's one of the best decks around. I think it's a little better than Adam Emancipator, but that's up for debate, I guess. Up for debate. <laughs> Only one way to find out, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Right, so shall we get stuck in? Let's hop right into it. Need the uh, so we're going to do the main deck first, like everyone expects. Yep. So we're starting off strong uh, with three Immortal Phoenix Gear 3. Yep. Uh, this card is like my new favourite card. If someone has basically no summoning requirement and its effect's amazing, yep. and you can add it like five or six different ways. That's, exa that's an exaggeration, but it's a lot of different ways. Yep. It's, it will become your favourite card too the moment you start playing this deck. And then my next favourite card is Infernoble Noble Knight. I think it's Renault. This card's insane. If you control any Fire Warrior, any at all doesn't need to be Infernoble. You just eat him from your hand, and when you do, he one, he becomes a tuner, and two, he allows you to pick up any equipped spell, so Living Fossil, that kind of that kind of jazz, or even any Fire Warrior. It's fantastic, and it comes up so much. Summon him off of the Cell Day you want to, just whenever he hits the board, any special summon that's when it happens. So yeah, he's fantastic as well. And then the lesser known Infernobles, you got Ogier. Ogi is just like a kind of a weird Armageddon Knight. Just sends uh, any, it's any Fire Warrior or Noble Arms put spell to the grave. It comes up, and of course she has that nice Infernoble effect where she's in the grave. You can equip to a Warrior you control, and her little plus is that that monster will then be unable to be destroyed by card effects. So it's pretty handy against like Lightning Storm, that kind of stuff. Seems good. And then this card, uh, Infernoble Knight Oliver. The more I think about this card, the more I like it. Because it does like three things extremely well. There's no part of this card which is wasted. And the only thing you could say is that if his attack points were a bit bigger, it'd be perfect. But he does, he accomplishes like three purposes. First of all, um, he's a tuner, a level four tuner. We can summon off a soul day, which is pretty insane. And then of course, he can summon himself from his hand by discarding a fire warrior or an equipped spell. You yeah, play divine sword, that's free summon, that's pretty good. And yep. the only problem is he becomes level one, but that can be good. And then the third one is, much like Ogier, uh, he, his uh, equip effect from the grave is that that equipped monster cannot be destroyed by it. Uh, be targeted by card effects, so, you know, Baylor, all that stuff, the permanents. It just, the benefits stack up when you have lots of these guys. Yeah. And then, this is probably one of the reasons I started playing the deck, is uh, this card, Sublimation Knight. It's called the X-Pound in ESG or something. Uh, this card, when comboed with this little critter, is one card entire combo. Yeah. And that's what's fantastic about it. It's like, you can open and like and five, like on four board summon. breakers, and this, and you're still good. That's yeah. what I love about it. Like, so he's on summon, you equip a fire warrior from your hand or deck to him, and it gains 500. The rest of the specs are relevant. I imagine it might come up, but probably not. And then Sweet Knight is a little fire warrior who has a little effect where if, if, it, it is, if it is equipped, it can summon itself. So just two warriors immediately make so they go from there. Yeah. And, that, and he was kind of cool combo. And he looks awesome. Oh, yeah, definitely. You want a little warrior <laughs> in your deck. Unintimidating until. <laughs> until. Uh, what's cool as well, because Charles can equip him, so like, theoretically Charles can summon him from the deck for free, if you haven't used him, which I find quite fun. Oh. And then we have uh, the Bricks, uh, Despot and Mac Mac Line. Broken. This card isn't too bad to open, because there is another way you can do the combo by summoning from hand with help. But for the most part, you never want to see these guys in your hand. Everything else, well, these three you don't want to see in your hand. One, two, three. And uh, no Jet Synchron? No, no, we don't, you don't need Jet Synchron. Don't need it. I mean, I guess you could like, play it in like, a small like tuning package. But, but you think these are better? Yeah. Sure. These are better. And then we have um, this free Ash, because I can't think of a format where Ash wasn't played at free, and this isn't going to be the exception. Yeah. Uh, and then that's all the monster lineup. Yep. Just move into the side. 
under the spell lineup. We have Heritage of the Chalice. Um, I half forgot this card existed. It's just uh, search anything uh, Noble Knight. So yeah. you can search any equipped spell which comes up. Then they can search art and set cards. It's pretty good. And of course, it just searches any Noble Knight. So you can search Renault. You can search for just anything. So yeah, it's really good. And this deck has like a lot of basically <laughs> rotors, doesn't it? Like it, yeah. it literally just searches it kind of like, like crazy. kind of sneaks up on you over the years, just yeah. generating them. <laughs> but also, like if you have like an Infernoble uh, with an equipped spell and it dies by Val, you can add this back to your hand, which is really like, it comes up. Just be aware of it. It's super, it's super good. Yep. You're very happy to see it. Uh, and then, of course, the next uh, cards uh, also do the same thing. Uh, rotor, 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 and rotor. Yep. Um, the standard, you know, it does. And then this card is a little bit different and it can be a little bit frustrating sometimes, but it is an amazing card. It's just a normal quick spell, just put to anything on the field, doesn't matter. And then you can you can make it destroy itself to search a level 5 or lower Fire Warrior. Yeah. That can be Sublimation, though. that can be Roland, doesn't matter, you can search it. Whatever you need. Exactly. That's like a, like a second effect which never comes up, so you probably don't even need to know that. It's like if the equipment wants to destroy it, you can summon a sort of battle was quick. You got like someone from Drave or something. It's like, it's irrelevant. Niche effect. Yeah, very niche. And then we have this card, uh, Joy S. This is like, in part, this is just another equip spell. Uh, the other one is that, of course, you can use it to add back a, any Fire Warrior from Graves. So this can be God Phoenix, that's quite relevant. This can be Sublimation, any Fire Warrior you want. And if it's a Crypto Monster and the monster has to die and go to the grave, you can then summon a Fire Warrior from hand. Back in the day, you would just use this to summon like a Gear Free, you summon. Uh, you add it to your hand you see onto the board and you can negate or not. Yeah. Yeah. I put the synchro, which we'll discuss in a bit. And then we have Arv. Um, Arv Aducha? Yeah, exactly. Right. Just pops their cards, everyone loves it, it's very good. And it's platinum, so it tilts people. I mean, if you want to give me a super fan, hook me up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just not paying for it. And then we have this card. This card, I didn't think this card was that good in this deck, then I realized uh, you actually kind of need it to put a more awkward hands where you need to summon Gear Free. Yeah. One of the best parts about Gear Free uh, is uh, the whole reason why we love it is because it's, it's, it's a Nibiru stopper. Yeah. Like, you can add it to your hand by like, milling with gear, then pick it up through Roland, and then like equip it through like. I don't know, make soul, mill this or whatever. Yeah. Or you could go here. And it just protects, protects, protects you from the beer. You don't have to go through some weird combo like Adamant Spear does. Mm -hmm. And you have Living Fossil. It's just a Prem. It's another equip spell. And you can add it back to hand a couple of times, which is kind of broken. Yeah. And uh, this is the most busted card um, <laughs> this deck plays. Lucky I didn't have to play against that. I, mean, okay. I got mine for like £10. They're, like, they're pretty expensive usually. Yeah. It's an old card and Yu Gi Oh does what it does best. And that's what, it, that's what that is uh, abuse old cards. Yeah. And this card, you make Charles. You send it to grave through uh, Soul Day. Yeah, uh, Charles Effect equips in the end phase. Use an effect to destroy it. Then you get to look at your opponent's hand and then just discard a card from it. That's, this is why I think this deck is a little bit better than that event because being able to just take away anything which you um, want from the opponent's hand is insane. And you have like usually two decks or more. And it's not random, you get to choose. You get to choose, you get to look, you get to take note, your hand, the hand becomes public knowledge, all that good stuff. And then to make sure we the combo goes through, we're playing Call by the Grave. Um, and then of course the new card, Triple Tactic Talent. Yep. Um, this card is not as good as, um, what do you call it, uh, Cross Out Designator, but for now it's good enough. It'll do. Um, it comes up because of course negate boards, monster effects happen, and it's pretty good. No one, not rarely people expect it, and it's a uh, quite good drop. And then just free traps is the impermanences. Does what it does. Yeah, exactly. Does what it does. It says in the tin. Okay, take us away. All right, continuing on. This is the uh, extra deck. So we get the two assault. Uh, sometimes the one doesn't go off. You need this sometimes the second. Very good card. Uh, one card combo. Like I think this card is reasonably. You can reasonably say this card should be banned at this point. Um, and then link cross. Uh, for the next step in the combo, we're after summoning Soul Day. And then you have the Hulk, the Hulk stuff. Uh, the Orc, the Mech Phantom Beast, because three levels is pretty good. Yep. Uh, then Access Code, this card doesn't come super often. You can play this or whatever the hell like this can be doing. You need to play this. You can play like Boral Soul, whatever the hell you want, but I find it's pretty good. And it's it a nice back. card. Yeah, definitely. And it just clears stuff and gets big. And that's all we, uh, the only real weakness of this deck I find is that sometimes it just can't get big enough. And that's yeah. it. That doesn't come up super often. Uh, then you have this guy. This guy's insane. Uh, maybe should have been like a rare at least. But yeah, really better rarity than common. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Man. But like, it's, well, level 5, Tuna Synchro, Insane, co combo with Martial Metal, um, searches in the end phase like Skarn, and uh, kind of is a quick equip to trigger Charles if you need to do like uh, uh, some popping. Mm -hmm. Martial Metal Marcher, combo piece, very good. Yep. Uh, also makes whatever it makes a Tuna, I can't, that, that will come up from one of the cards I'm about to discuss in a bit. 
um, arc light because you can make it fairly easy, uh, super good, especially against like hand traps and whatnot. Uh, crawl dragon. This card is only really there because you get a free draw if you make it off tokens. Uh, yeah, the other card does come up. Say if you open like an outline in hand, and then you make this off like a dead health or something. This card then you can make charges and draw. It's pretty good. Yep. Shooting riser. I never understood why this card was played before, but now I do because it's meant to like kind of fix awkward situations. So you can just make it like a tuner. Um, I really want the hell you need. So that, that, that comes up quite often. It's also pretty nice that you can summon it off of um, Alcan and Synchro again. Yeah. Uh, then we come to the big boys. We have uh, Royal and Savage. Everyone plays him. He's ridiculous. I think he's still quite quite pricey. I don't know. He's like, still insane. Yeah, yeah. He's still insane. Well, ages ago. Um, yeah, it's a really good card and just does what it's in the tin. The gates and gets big. Uh, then we have the big boy Charles. Charles does is a uh, well, Charles does a lot. He's one of the best parts of the deck. Um, I think it's if an equip spell is equipped to anything on the field, opponent side, your side, whatever, activates effect and it's a non target pop, which is well as good as it is. And then during each end phase he can equip an equip spell from the grave to him, any equip spell. And if you do that you can equip then a fire warrior from your deck, so you want to get a nice O'Gear or Olivier boost or something. And then of course, um, every turn of course. So like the typical play is you summon him then in the end phase you equip um, your milled uh, Smoke grenade and some fire warriors to protect him. Yeah, pop the smoke grenade and then look at his hand, and then he's just big and he's quite difficult to clear sometimes. Seems pretty good. Yeah, exactly. And then kind of special weapons outside the combo. Uh, this is Trish. Uh, Trish is if, Trish. If you can play Trish, or you think it's good. Yeah. Uh, also, if you make this, uh, there is a root, there's um, something I'm um, trying out through theory. Is that if you make this through uh, Marshal Metal Marcher, Metal Marcher makes him a tuner, so level 9 tuner. Uh, usually you'll have another level 3 in the field, and then I thought maybe playing this would be quite funky. Okay. And so then you can sync a, a level 9 with a level 3 and make 12. Um, I only, I'm only trying this out, it hasn't come up yet, but the theory is he's a big 3k that if he's in the extra monster zone, uh, he, will, he cannot be affected by anything. Yeah. So 3k unaffected, I know it might be good against like Alter Guys or something like that. And you've already ripped a bunch of their stuff as well, so it's going to be harder to overcome that anyway, yeah, naturally. You, you're, going, you're following up from a trip. Yeah, so exactly. That's pretty good, but hey, um, that's just fear at the moment. So, Cyborg. Cyborg is super easy for this deck, you can side out all the going first cards, usually. And, just, and I, um, well, you just side in like board breakers, don't you? Side in the Beerus yep. uh, for whatever the hell you need, maybe Mirror Match or whatever. You side in Cosmics for Eldlick because that's still a de deck, unfortunately. Yep. Uh, whatever the hell, Board Breakers. So, yeah, this can just be whatever it is, but at the moment, like this just seems pretty optimal for me. Yeah, um, covers think, all your ground. Yeah, yeah, I think this locals, uh, if I had a bit more time because I'd be of a scuffle in the morning, I would probably maybe print Jamie, the kid's fault. <laughs> exactly, coming for you. Bro. Um, yeah, Red Reboot would have pretty gone in because like this, this locals likes their traps. Yeah. <laughs> in, bo in both senses of the word. <laughs> okay, any uh, any shout outs or any comments before we go? Uh, I guess to shout out to Joe for that for letting me do the profile, it's pretty cool. No problem, uh, thank you very much. I've been watching a bunch of um, videos on it, I, I really like the deck, I've been playing it mad on the dual input. And you think it's the best deck? I think, I, yeah, I think it's the best deck. Okay, we'll see. Do you think it'll still be the best deck next format? I don't know, man. I feel as though you need to, there's a lot of combo pieces that have been played out at the moment. Oh, yeah, I don't know if it goes, I don't know where we'll go from there. <laughs> all right, well, thank you very much for taking the time to do the profile. Big shout out to Jamie for almost absolutely cucking us and not allowing us to be able to do it by not bringing the cards for broads. Good lad. Uh, thank you very much for watching, guys. If you haven't already, you should most definitely hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. All right, cheers, guys. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed the garbage content I've put together for you. Enough to hit subscribe, and maybe even drop a thumbs up and a comment. Before you go, be sure to check out the links in the description to help support the people who are making this channel a possibility. Thanks again for checking in, and I'll see you in the next one.